Welcome to Wander Mode, a podcast that wanders through topics such as entrepreneurship, traveling, and mamahood. As a teacher turned entrepreneur and a mama to one, I am sharing my tips and tricks to maintain harmony in a multifaceted life. Let's wander. Today, we are talking self-care, primarily because last week I had the pleasure to interview the mother-daughter duo from Kobe Co., Tasha Harris and Kobe Gregory. Before I had them on the podcast, I was really moved at first by their website. Just their message of supporting their community and these unique products were enough to really get me to say, huh, this is super interesting. I decided to go to their store with a friend and loved that vibe. And then I'm sitting here interviewing them on my podcast and I'm listening to them share their story. And it just sent me over the moon. From a former teacher standpoint, what is there not to love about Kobe's story, right? She is a high school student. She was determined to improve her mental health. She wanted to help her mom pay for this opportunity that she wanted. And she comes up with this idea to sell a candle. Now, the unique thing about their candle is that it has a curated playlist that comes along with it. I mean, wow, like seriously brilliant idea from a self-care perspective. For years, when I was teaching middle school, I taught this Shark Tank project. And the Shark Tank project involved so many of the same components of Kobe's story. The students had to create or improve upon an existing product They had to market it. They had to pitch it to people. They had to try to strike a deal with the sharks. So for me, sitting there listening to Kobe's story was like seeing this real life shark tank play out in front of me. And I thought back to the moment when I walked in their store and their store really is pure magic. Records on the wall, music with all the good vibes, these delicious fragrances, and then you see their smiley, friendly faces. And we chatted for a bit about the podcast, and to this day, I will not forget what Tasha said to me on the way out. At the time, I had really been struggling with confidently sharing what I was doing with the podcast. I always tended to downplay it. Oh, well, you know, thank you so much for being willing to come on my podcast. It's still really little. And as I'm making this comment, Tasha stops me in my tracks and says, don't ever make yourself small. And I needed that mama bear advice in that moment. (laughs) Here I am, 40 years old, and I am making myself small. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what the heck, Julie? But it was the kick in the pants that I needed in that moment. And I didn't know at that time just how much I would love that candle that I took home that day. To be honest, I have never really been much of a candle burning kind of person, but that candle now burns on my desk daily for a few reasons. One, the scent is scrumptious and it makes me think of all the warm, cozy things. Second, the playlist is actually a collection of artists that really bring good energy into my office space while I'm trying to crank out work. But also watching that flame burn there is something that just makes me feel like every day when I go to light it, I am igniting the fire in me to keep going with this entrepreneurial journey. It makes me feel like it's just a little bit of self-care every single day. And ultimately, it is why I loved that podcast interview so much, is that is really what their business is all about, self-care. Self-care when you're in the midst of a pandemic and nothing about life is going how we are expecting it to. Self-care when it was time for Tasha to leave her corporate job and fully support her daughter in this business that she was building. Self-care through lovingly pouring these candles and gifting the ability to do self-care through others, 
self-care for the families that are affected by gun violence through designing and selling the Black Lives Matter candle, self-care for the students that they give scholarships to through the funds that are generated by their business. Self-care is truly their specialty and the authentic nature of their business just radiated through them. And that is really what their candle is doing for me every single time I light it. And I just really feel blessed to have shared space with those ladies for a bit. But after the podcast episode was over, it really got me thinking about the reality of self-care in our lives. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but why is it so darn hard to remember to do self-care. When I first started this journey of entrepreneurship in June, I was bound and determined to practice more self-care and prioritize it in this new role that I found myself in. I was in charge of my day and I should be able to do that, right? Initially, the journaling and the boundaries between work and life and my reactions to all of the new changes in my life were balanced, and it felt good. It felt right. But then, slowly, as it usually does, I allowed the boundary lines to get a little bit blurred, and then they were gone completely. I was journaling too little. I was jumping into work too quickly in the morning. I was more focused on my to-do list than my process. Interestingly, this is a process that I know actually makes me more productive, but somehow I find myself in these situations in which I convince myself that the five minutes that I'm taking to journal are actually better spent accomplishing something else. Now, in this exact moment as I sit here, self-care is back on my radar, but how is it that at times in our life, we prioritize it so much And other times, it just simply doesn't exist. Is that normal? Today, what I want to do is share some of the things that have been happening in my journey that I think ended up overriding me prioritizing the self-care and also reflecting now on why I think I'm bouncing back to it. So if we take a little jog back in time to June, July, and August, For me, that time frame was all about podcasting. I was scripting, I was researching, I was talking, I was processing, and I was giving myself all of this self-care because I had just left teaching. And I knew, I knew I needed it. Looking back, I'm actually really grateful that I made the decision to start the podcast because it was this stronghold that kept me from falling apart over my decision to leave this job that I loved. And the podcasting really continues to be that stronghold and my really inexpensive therapy. And during those few months, as I'm podcasting, I'm also journaling, I was walking, and I was so balanced. And it was exactly what I needed at that particular time in my life. Then September came. And all of my teacher friends are going back to school. And I had this moment of panic because I wasn't going back. And I felt incredibly disconnected in those moments from the family that I had built there. As an entrepreneur, and I talked about this a little bit with Kobe and Tasha, but as an entrepreneur, life can be very isolating. Other than dropping my daughter off at daycare in the morning, there are some days, especially if my husband is off doing his flying lessons for his private pilot's license, that I don't talk to a single other person. Now, some of you may be like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And for a while it was, but you have to remember, I left a job that was incredibly social. So for me, the first few months of starting this journey were so exciting that I I didn't even really notice it. But as the months kind of went on, I think that that started sitting heavier and heavier with me. My team, 
that I used to work in my classroom every day with during prep was no more. I didn't have anybody to vent to. I didn't have somebody to give me a hug when I'm just sitting here feeling like I can't do something or I can't learn this next thing. I didn't have anybody telling me, you can do this. I didn't have anyone sitting across from me giving me this energy that can be so motivating. Then I thought, crap, what am I doing? I felt overwhelmed by the silence, but also by starting this business that was realistically in a realm that was so different from who I had been for the last 15 years. I was a teacher. I knew how to connect with people. I knew how to organize information. I knew how to communicate that information. But what I wasn't was a marketer. I wasn't a product developer. I wasn't a salesperson. I wasn't a website designer. I wasn't a social media expert. Yet now, in this new role, I was required to be all of those things. And I had perhaps what you would call a temporary identity crisis. And September just became this spiral month of overwhelm. Bye-bye, self-care. I was trying so hard to stay afloat that I just started letting those boundaries blur. Now, fortunately for me, I was paying attention at the time to someone on social media that was exactly who I needed. Meeting Courtney, who ended up being my business coach, and I interviewed her several podcasts back, she was that life ring that I needed. I had never intended going into this that I was going to be hiring a coach. But in September, it was very clear to me that I was floundering and I did not have the greatest sense of direction for our business. So Courtney was able to step in, help me get my feet back on solid ground. But then came the real challenge of me attempting to get my self-care routine back on track. Because starting with a coach meant that now, yes, I had this clear direction, but I also had a really big task list in order to get me to my goal of launching a course by January 1st. And that task list included social media. Big crap. (laughs) Social media for me is Facebook once a month posting about my kid. I didn't even really ever post about myself unless it involved me like going on a trip or something with my family. So I'm sitting here listening to Courtney. What do you mean I have to post every day? What do you mean I need to be on Instagram? What what is a reel? What is a story? What is trendy audio? I know, I know, I'm only 40. <laughs> I should know these things, but I didn't. And so it was a ton of learning and feeling discouraged and tears and pulling myself back up. So when I reflect on the last few months and think, hmm, where did my self-care go? Well, Honestly, it wasn't a priority because I was simply surviving, trying to pull my act together every day to build this thing that was so beyond what I was used to. I am sharing this today because even for me in choosing to become an entrepreneur, in my mind, it was this one thing. And as I got into the reality of it, Just like anything in our lives, it's always just a little different than we expect, right? So similar to me becoming a mom, there were a lot of things that I could prepare myself for, and there were a lot of assumptions that I made about how things were going to be, and then you find yourself in that situation, and the reality can be very different from what you had thought something was going to be, and this is that exact situation for me. I had to start aligning my expectations of what I was able to do with the reality of what the situation was giving me at the time. And do I wish that I would have prioritized self-care in the last two months because I think I would probably have been in a better headspace? Absolutely. But did I? Nope. And you know what? It's okay. Because I also reflect on the fact that although I was not great about doing my self-care routine, I was still making steps forward every single day in my business. And I am now two and a half months further than I was at the beginning of October. 
And you know that quote, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step? That resonates hardcore with me right now because that is this entrepreneurial journey. It is a thousand miles. But if I don't take at least a few steps every single day, I will never be done with the thousand miles. So I just need to move the needle a little tiny bit. Maybe not as much as I would like on some days, but I just need to move it. So today, what I am giving myself is grace. Grace is what I am doing instead of self-care. Giving myself the grace to say, tomorrow is a new day. It is okay. Why do I think that I'm coming back to self-care at this particular point in time? Well, I think it's because my soul knows it's time to tell me enough is enough. Our bodies, our minds, our hearts, they tolerate a lot. They let us let go of a lot, but we all have our unique limits, right? And I think my soul knew that in order for me to get beyond where I am right now, I need to slow down. And funny enough, my card that I did on Monday as a drawing was a turtle. And it talked all about reflecting on patience, longevity, moving through things with intention. So although I have departed from self-care for over the hundredth time in my adult life, I am returning to my dear friend and I'm sitting in this exact moment appreciating my return to it. Friends, if you are in a moment of self-care at this time, I am so incredibly happy for you. If you are not in that moment of self-care at this time, don't overthink it. You listening to this podcast and even thinking about where you're at with self-care right now is the first step of a thousand miles. If you wandered to this point in the episode, thank you for listening to the Wander Mode podcast. Please leave a review and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Wander Mode Co. Reach me by email at julie at wandermode.co. Until next time, wander on.